In its report on World Trade Center 7, which came out in May of 2002, FEMA documents in Appendix C steel that has been melted and even partially evaporated, resembling Swiss cheese. What are we to make of this? This was the size of steel that they used in the construction of Tower 7. They didn't use this particular kind of steel in Towers 1 or Towers 2. So that's why we know its pedigree. It was a surprise uh, to me because it was so eroded and deformed, and so um, we took it for analysis in the lab. One section of steel was kept. How it got to be in its present state was described by the New York Times as perhaps the deepest mystery uncovered in the investigation. Those parts where the entire half inch of the beam is, of, is gone, entirely dissolved right through. And so something happened to cause the steel to really thin and in some places to disappear entirely. Well, it was attacked by uh, what we determined was a liquid slag. When we did the analysis, we actually identified it as an, a, a, a liquid containing iron, sulfur, and oxygen. I'd like to know why NIST excluded the evidence of melting steel. Well, why is this not included? Why is this forensic evidence not being included in the report? First of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, and there's no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel. Like a molten bit. steel running down the channel rails. Like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like lava. Like, like, like lava. From a volcano. It actually melted beams where it was molten steel that was being dug out. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of a wall. It's this fused element of, of steel, mo molten steel and concrete and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. And they pulled out the big block of concrete and there was a, like a little river of steel uh, flowing. Many witnesses, firemen, and lots of people described the flowing molten metal, iron or steel, at extremely hot temperatures. And John Gross categorically denied their observations, so that because their observations don't fit his preconceived notion, he not only ignored evidence, he denied evidence. There were reports of uh, molten steel having been seen in the, uh, in the rubble pile of all three buildings. And uh, I knew that jet fuel, uh, which is essentially kerosene, uh, is not uh, capable of melting steel nor iron. Um, kerosene or jet fuel uh, burns uh, at less than 1600 degrees Fahrenheit and molten steel needs at least uh, 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in order to uh, melt. In an office fire, you cannot generate enough heat to melt steel. And yet we have evidence of molten iron in the microspheres, in the rubble pile, and the metal pouring out of the side of the tower. I worked as a, uh, uh, in the project engineering department of the casting plant uh, of Elcan, the aluminum company of Canada, one of the largest aluminum smelters on the planet at the time. And uh, in that smelter, we turned aluminum oxide into aluminum, molten aluminum. Molten aluminum is silver. It's not yellow, it's silver. It looks like mercury. The yellow molten metal that I saw pouring out of the South Tower is indicative of molten iron. The official explanation of what happened there was that 
The heat from the fire supposedly softened the steel and thereby brought the buildings down. Well, second law of thermodynamics says, just like water can only flow downhill when it's poured on the ground, similarly heat can only move downhill. But with heat, downhill means from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature. And the heat flowing uphill from a 750 degree flame to a 3000 degree puddle of molten steel violated the second law of thermodynamics. The only way that's known that a carbonaceous material can cause steel or iron oxide to, to be, turn into a molten metal is in a blast furnace. Yeah, and that's very different than what we had. So what is this molten metal? It's a direct evidence for the use of thermite. An incendiary used by the military, thermite is a compound of iron oxide and aluminum which, when ignited, sustains an extreme heat reaction, creating molten iron. In just two seconds, thermite can reach temperatures over 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, quite enough to liquefy steel. We know that open-air fires cannot burn hot enough to melt steel, but metal had melted at the base of the towers. I found a pore in the steel that, w that had pure sulfur uh, embedded in the pore, uh, which I thought was very strange. And um, so that's when I, I really started looking for sulfur in, in, and, and finding it in more abundance in some, of these in some of these phases. There's a government theory that calcium, calcium sulfate from gypsum boards was the source of sulfur, and that's wrong. Uh, calcium sulfate cannot go undergo any kind of a chemical reaction that produces the element sulfur. And we're not dealing with any kind of uh, compound of sulfur. When we're talking about sulfidation, we're de dealing with uh, the element sulfur. There's a version of thermite called thermate, which has uh, sulfur in the thermate. And what the sulfur does is it, it uh, it's sort of like um, salt on ice. And it just basically makes the uh, steel melt at a lower temperature. And if you do a search on Google for uh, thermite and building demolition, you can find devices that have been fabricated uh, and invented that use thermite for building demolitions. In the case of thermite cutting charges, you would have heard far less noise since they are worked by uh, thermal heating, melting of the steel, rather than an explosive cutting as in RDX charges. Overflights had detected uh, with infrared camera 1400 degree Fahrenheit hotspots on the surface uh, of ground zero and uh, that being there for a week um, you know indicates that there was something very hot going on below the surface. So thermite would also explain potentially the fact that the fires could not be put out at ground zero. The fires lasted for quite a while, but um, most importantly, they were deep within the pile where people would expect that the environment was oxygen starved. And uh, thermite could explain this because it has its own oxidant within. It's actually the uh, metallic oxide that provides the oxidant to allow the uh, incendiary thermite reaction to occur, even underwater.